For the most part, we are all smitten by cats. But hey, let's be honest, sometimes your furry friend is up to no good. Annoyingly jumping around or lunging at you with catty paws, cats can be real messy. So if your little furball has ever ruined your fancy furniture or new white linen, stick around as we tell you exactly how to keep your kitty calm and under control. Do cats get it when you say no? Okay, so as a rule of paw, first step to fixing a bad kitty is to understand this. Most annoying cat behaviors are actually driven by natural instincts. Remember, cats don't understand words or the human ways. But lucky for you, you can teach them how to stop doing something you don't want. Wondering how? Well, cats are smart and given time can easily learn to respond to your body language. In fact, just like dogs, using positive and negative ways of reinforcement, cats can be taught so many cool things. So don't lose hope, my friend. If you consistently use the word no with the right facial expression and hand gestures, your cat will eventually be able to crack the code. Six ways to let them know. One, when your cat is getting a little out of control, make sure you enunciate no in a loud, firm voice. Two, you should always have a strong posture and maintain direct eye contact with your cats. Three, you can also add a hissing noise after every word to emphasize your intent. Four, if all that doesn't work, you can try to physically remove your cat from the crime scene so they learn to associate the word with your disapproval. Five, and if you find them chewing on the foot of your favorite couch, you can also redirect their attention to a similar behavior, such as scratching on a post. Six, remember when it comes to training your pet cats, consistency is key, so make sure you repeat these steps in the same way every time. So how do we stop bad behavior? Sometimes simply saying no doesn't make your cat realize that they are in the wrong, as they might end up associating the action and the word no with you, which basically means they'll only learn to avoid undesirable behaviors when you're physically around. On a simpler logic, spraying your cat will yield the same results, as your cat will only learn not to do the undesired acts when you're physically around to spray her off. So what can you do? Do we leave it up to the gods of fate, or is there something you can do to teach your cat the right ways? Remember, a cat's behavior is determined by the consequences that follow, so the ultimate idea is to associate an unpleasant outcome with the undesired action you want them to avoid. For example, if your cat is jumping around the kitchen counter, you might want to set up a motion-detecting spray that sports air whenever your cat jumps. But here's the big secret they don't tell you. For any spray or deterrent to be effective, it has to be deployed every single time your cat is being too jumpy or destructive. Bad textures and smells can also be used to stop cats from accessing off-limit spots around the house. Many cats also don't like aluminum foil or sticky paper because of the way they feel and sound under their paws. So if your cat is scratching hard at a chair, you can stick a few strips of sticky paper and you should be good to go. Just like every other cat, if your feline likes to chew on wires, you can use taste deterrents such as lime juice to keep them away. Effective ways to discipline your cats. Just like we told you, the key to encouraging the right behavior is understanding how most cat behavior is based on natural instincts. But thankfully for you, there's a few ways to go around that. Just remember, cats are never driven by malice, so they mean no harm to you or your property. If your cat likes to chew on that green leather ottoman you love, try to give them access to a few scratching posts around the house. Remember, cats need to keep their claws ready and sharp. And if your cat likes to jump on the counter or lodge at great heights, make sure to have an elevated cat stand where your kitty can perch up high, like a queen, and cats scan the room as much as they like. If your cat is a fan of running water, make sure there's enough running water in the form of cat fountains all over your crib. It's also common for a cat to come at your feet if they are feeling bored, understimulated, or simply suffering from a lack of exercise or play. Remember, it's your duty as a good cat parent to shower them with plenty of toys while spending time with them every day for a little game of ball. A poorly kept litter box can make your furry friend giving up on the whole box idea, and we don't want that. So always make sure to clean the box twice a week, maintain proper hygiene, and pick the litter tray your cat prefers. But always be on your guard, as litter box avoidance can sometimes be a sign of an underlying medical complication, such as a urinary tract infection, so you might want to take your cat to the vet to rule out any serious medical issues at play. Big mistakes you should avoid. When training your cat, one thing to avoid is rewarding bad behavior with treats. 
If your cat gets positive reinforcement each time they jump on the counter and smash a mink vase, they'll probably never stop. Is it okay to get physical? So here's what most people get wrong. When things get dicey, we are all tempted to teach our kitty a lesson by yelling at them. But did you know intimidating your cat can actually harm your bond with your furry friend and even make their behavior worse in the future? One of the least effective ways to fix them, hitting your cat can actually lead them to act more anxious and scared around you. It can also trigger aggressive scratching and biting so they don't end up hurting themselves. What about you? What special trick do you use to train your cat in the ways of the world? Let us know in a comment below.